Greetings, and welcome once again to Justify Nonetheless. I am Kevin Berger, and I apply the principles of polemics and skepticism to atheism and the claims made by atheists. In this series, I hope that I have made a compelling case for why I'm convinced that while non-belief is an interesting, abstract, philosophical concept, it remains hypothetical when it comes to reality. I have hopefully explained convincingly that because action entails the presence of belief and the fact that action is necessary means that one is compelled to form some kind of tentative belief. I would like to think that I have sufficiently explained why withholding judgment does not equate to withholding belief and that being uncertain or unconvinced or not consciously accepting a claim as true does not equate to not believing that it's true. I've attempted to show that a disparity in the credence shown to either a pair of binary claims constitutes belief in the claim to which the greater credence is granted, even if that difference is tiny. And because non-belief in either claim would require a perfect balance between the two, this is an unrealistic expectation. I've explained why the courtroom and gumball analogies serve well for demonstrating the burden of proof, but they do not substantiate the claim distinction between non-belief and belief to the contrary nor do differences in linguistic expression or personal anecdotes. I've explained why just as a claim is unfalsifiable is not scientific, the same is true of a claim that can't ever be verified as true, as is the case with non-belief. I've also explicitly stated multiple times that I do not claim to know that any atheist who expresses non-belief actually does believe one way or the other. In fact, I've stated that I've made a rational inference based on action and that no one can know this, including the individual in question. Finally, I've explained why claiming to know this is intellectually dishonest and to believe that a genuine dis distinction between non-belief and belief to the contrary exists in reality without empirical evidence to substantiate it, while also simultaneously dismissing the claimed existence of a deity due to a lack of evidence is a special pleading. I've provided a comprehensive list for arguments for why I'm convinced that non-belief is nonsensical, and I've provided a collection of logical fallacies that fail to substantiate its existence. The last statement on that issue will now come to you from Bertrand Russell, who said, either a thing is true or it isn't. If it is true, you should believe it. And if it isn't true, you shouldn't. And if you can't find out whether it's true or it isn't, you should suspend judgment but you can't. If you have found any of the information in this series informative, useful, or entertaining, I humbly ask that you consider offering your support through one of the options provided in the description. Also, consider purchasing my book, Atheum is Untenable, available through your favorite bookseller. I will produce more videos in the future, so keep an eye out for those as well. Patrons who are paid subscribers to the Justified Nonetheless Patreon project will have early access to those videos as well as exclusive access to other content. So consider becoming a patron if you appreciate this type of content. Until next time, remember, even if your beliefs aren't necessarily true, they should be justified nonetheless.